Welcome to Boomer Travel Patrol, where we bring you the best in trends, stories, and destinations for the Boomer generation. I'm your host, Lisa Caslin, and welcome to our first show. I'm so excited. I have a dear friend uh, and an expat who lives in the south of France. Her name is Deborah Bine. Welcome, Deborah. Good morning, Lisa. How are you? I'm very well. You're yeah. not in France right now, though, right? No. Unfortunately, I made my tickets back last night, so I'm halfway there. Oh, you're halfway there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure they'll have a, a big cheering committee waiting for you. Oh, I hope. <laughs> so, so, Deborah, just to catch up and let our viewers know a little bit about you, I know you're a world traveler, and you now do a blog sort of based on your, your life now in France, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So, talk a little bit about how this all started and what you're doing and how you got there. Okay. Well, I started the Barefoot Blogger uh, as a way to communicate with friends when I took off on this strange new life that I took. But to begin with, um, I went, I'm a it, just fanatic Anglophile. So when I learned that Will and Kate were going to be married in England, then I was still working at the time and I said, I'm going to England to see the wedding. So I took off to England and by myself and went to the wedding and just got to be on the front, right in front of the gate with the big kiss and everything. But I also communicated with some friends that were there and had a new friend who lives in the south of France and invited me to come over, you know, just while I was in the territory. Mm -hmm. So I went over there and the entertainment while I was there for six days in the south of France was to go to the various markets and the villages. <laughs> the villages have, you know, certain market days during the week. Mm -hmm. So we went to Uzes, and that's U-Z-E-S, France, on a Saturday for the Saturday market, and I was just blown away. And I said, I don't know if you've ever done it or not, but some place you go and you say, I got to come back here. Yeah. So I retired about a year later and planned a whole visit, my whole retirement holiday for about four weeks around Uzes to go. And so I rented an apartment there, said, I want to see what life is like in France. No idea about moving, just wanted to go, you know, have this experience, you know, and live like the French and blah. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I did that. And then I met all these wonderful people over there that are American, mostly English, Scottish, mostly Europeans and Brits, but, and a lot of wonderful French people. And I thought, you know, they were living over there part of the year or most of the year. And I thought, why can't I, you know? So that was kind of how I went. And I came home and I sold everything I had. <laughs> and I packed up and two months later, I was in France. That is amazing. So, that amazing. Is, it, so just to give us a little bit of perspective, for those of us who don't know where Uzes is, where is there another larger city? How far is it from Paris? Yeah, well, uh, it's very close to Avignon, which okay. people, if they go to Provence, that's not far from Oxen Provence. It's about an hour from there. It's about 45 minutes from Avignon. It's about 35 minutes from Nîmes, which isn't as well known to us. But um, and it's but it's by car. It's about three and a half hours to Barcelona. It kind of cuts a triangle up and then about three and a half hours to Nice. Oh, so wow. it goes, you know, like that point of the triangle across from Nice and Barcelona. Yeah, you have so it's very unbelievable yes. access to Europe in general oh, now. Amazing. Right? Obviously, yeah, that's amazing. That's excellent. So you have busted a lot of assumptions by by doing what you have done. You're a 60 something, right? Yes. Uh, and you know, lots of people think France living there. Yeah, sure. Dream. But uh, financially, I'm not a rich person. I have a fixed income. Was that ever something that kind of entered into your mind as this is going to be a deal breaker? Oh, absolutely. And I, I was a new retiree. 
So I didn't even know with, you know, fixed income, how, how does that last? How do you spend that? Yeah. And so, but the good news was, is when I was there and I went to real estate agents, I found how reasonable the real estate is. And I'm renting, I don't own. And I thought, wow, that's a big, I mean, almost half as much. So I thought, well, that at least will pay my airfare back and forth with what I had budgeted for my, you know, housing. And um, so that was the big, that was the big thing when I found housing that was really reasonable yeah. and everything else is about the same cost, you know, groceries, going out to eat, everything else is about the same cost. So, you know, the big cost is getting back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. And I know so, you have a, a grandchild now. So I do. A brand new one. We're, yes. drag, we're dragging you back and forth, but that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes life more exciting. So one other uh, myth buster is the language barrier. And I know that you really, you barely spoke a word of French, <laughs> which I think is probably the most courageous <laughs> of this whole thing. Yeah. I don't know how you did it. So you just, that, that was not even, you know, a consideration at the time, but I think you probably, you know, how to change your heart, right? Experience well, that? Well, yes. And that I actually didn't think about it as much as I probably should have because there's little things like using the telephone that especially, and you're trying to get set up in a new apartment or whatever, and you, you know, you can, the water doesn't run or you got to, the, you know, computer doesn't work or the internet and you're like, oh gosh, you know, and you pick up the phone and it goes through one of these chains that you can't possibly get through because you can't understand a word or nobody human to say, help, can anybody speak English? So, you know, I think I would have thought maybe harder if I realized that, but I, I uh, found some really good friends that would, you know, put up with me on a daily basis to get some of the stuff solved. And, you know, I got it done. But, um, that, and I'm trying, I really am trying, you know, but I'm a, I'm a, you know, baby boomer, older person. And, <laughs> and there are other things besides studying French. I know. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. But you're probably you're probably picking up a lot by osmosis, right? I think so. I think so. I think there I was there. This will be the third year that I'm going back. And the first two, they were like very patient. And this time back, I think they're going to be saying, you know, I mm, thought you were going to learn some French while you were in the States. So <laughs> we'll see what the next excuse is. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, um, I want to I want to ask you one more question because I know sure. a lot of people always want to know, oh, you know, you read Travel and Leisure and all the travel publications and, you know, it's the usual kinds of stories and, you know, places. So what are your secret treasures? Where, what are the things that you think people have not yet really uh, appreciated or admired in France that they should? Well, I, I don't know why or how, but I've become a huge history buff. And I certainly, I mean, that's a nightmare of mine through college as they found out I didn't pass history or something. I didn't graduate. But just to be there, Lisa, and to walk in the footsteps and where I am is, is uh, gall, you know, and the Romans and in and, and the city where I am, it's 11, you know, 11th, 12th century city and to know that it's gone on for generations and you know people have walked the same streets and the French are very proud of their history and want to share it with you and take you to visit places that you never knew I mean places that are off the beaten track that I, I don't think you would find if you didn't live there every day and and really get in with the people and with their their emotions and their their closeness to their history and their willingness and you know desire to share it with you yeah and of course it's gorgeous that. it is gorgeous there <laughs> all year round all year round i can't wait to come back and visit you and we'll do Please. a live a live broadcast from, from my tower i live in a tower lisa <laughs> 55 steps Oh my goodness. Well, listen, if people want to catch up with you and find out and get a, a little taste and see some pictures, what's your web address? It's bfblogger.com, okay. as in barefootblogger.com, but bfblogger. 
And I please invite you to come because I've met some fabulous people, you know, through the blog that I've met in person. And I, that's the best part. Oh, that's wonderful. All right. Listen, we're going to wrap up, but it's okay. been so great catching up. Thank you for sharing everything with us. Well, I expect you to come visit very soon. I am. I'll be there. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> bye. Lisa. Okay. Bye-bye.